Hi, this is Dr. Rick Janelle, and uh, I want to talk to you this morning about what faith is and a little bit about what it isn't. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to uh, make the case that faith means just keep walking no matter what. Uh, a lot of people have different ideas of what faith is and what faith isn't. Uh, here's a couple of graphics that uh, we can talk about. Some people view doubt this way. They say, I can't see clearly, I don't do everything right, and I haven't decided who to trust. Now let's contrast that with what biblical faith is. Biblical faith is, I too can't see clearly. I don't do everything right. And I have decided who to trust. See how they compare? Doubt and faith seem to be very similar. Um, and yet we think that they are opposites. And they're not opposites. They are just different manifestations of the human experience. And the key to both is, who do we trust who do we not trust? Have we decided to trust? Have we not decided to trust? Let's look together briefly in the book of Romans at what Paul calls faith. And here's how he describes it in the first few chapters of this book. Uh, chapter 2.12, he says, all who sin will be judged. Okay. In chapter 3.23, he says, all have sinned. So that means that we're all going to be judged, right? Well, yes, except for where God has taken action, and that's what he talks about in chapter 3 as well, that God cares and he provides a solution in Christ. And uh, then in chapter 4, he mentions this little phrase about Abraham. He says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And so the whole point seems to be that because of this flow of things where uh, people who sin will be judged, um, all have sinned, God provides, a, uh, God provides a solution in Christ. Abraham believed God. It was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham has been called the father of the faithful. And sometimes we forget that this man who was the father of the faithful was a human being just like us. He was not called the father of the faithful because he made no mistakes. Abraham made many, many horrible mistakes, just like all the characters in the Bible do. Uh, and yet... Those, those mistakes didn't characterize who he was inside, who he served with his life, and how he moved forward when he tried to make those things right. So let's briefly look at how did Abraham believe? What did, uh, what, what did his life look like? Well, uh, number one, he, he disobeyed God's direct command. God told him, leave your people, your father's household. And yet when he left, he took his nephew Lot with him and took his father part of the way. When God promised that he would be the father of a great nation, he laughed at God's promises. He had sex with the family maid. He drove a pregnant woman out into the wilderness. He loaned his wife to a lecherous king. And the crazy thing to me is that some of these things are even set up as examples of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 12. How can these things be? How could this be the father of the faithful? How could a man who lived this way be called a faithful person or a person of faith? See, for some, struggling means I have little or no faith, or it means God doesn't care, God isn't there, God isn't real, I'm a failure. These are words that we hear over and over in our head, and we need to remember that one of the names for Satan is he's the accuser of the brethren. And as I try to remind people occasionally, every thought in your head is not your thought. Some thoughts are your thoughts. Some thoughts are promptings by God's Spirit. Some th thoughts are temptations from the devil. And sometimes thoughts in your own head are just bad dreams from the Mexican food you ate last night. I believe that the Bible teaches us that the struggle is the faith. See, Job, for example, didn't accept his troubles meekly. He shouted and screamed, I want to argue my case with God. Jeremiah wanted to argue with God about fairness and justice in life. John the Baptist doubted his own confession and his own convictions about Jesus. Jesus, hanging on the cross, questioned God, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The father of a demon-possessed boy who said, I believe, help me overcome my belief. You see, all through the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, front page to back page, we find that this thing called faith if it's a healthy faith, contains plenty of healthy doubts. Here's a couple of quotes for you. Andre Reznor said, The struggle with God is not a lack of faith. It is faith. 
a man who was a mentor of mine in my teenage years in Amarillo, Texas, a rural, we all called him Pa Prosser. I was talking to him one day about some of the doubts and fears that I had as a Christian, and I'll never forget, he said, doubts and fears are not warped, sinful, or evil. They really are fairly normal, and it would be really weird if you didn't have a lot of them. For some reason, those words really encouraged me that day, and uh, I went on to become a, a grown man of faith, partly because the words of Pa kept ringing in my ears through the years. See, here's Paul's explanation. Faith may doubt, but it doesn't give up. Romans 4.3 says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him, to, to him as righteousness. It doesn't mean that he was totally righteous, and yet he was. How? How could a man who did the things that he did be a righteous person? Well, the same way that a man who did the, the things that Saul of Tarsus did could become the Apostle Paul. You believe God, you trust God, you live your life as if what he says is true, even if all around you says that it's not, and it's credited to you as righteousness. The difference between what you're able to accomplish, what you're able to be, the, uh, uh, the mistakes that you make, and where God wants you to be, the difference is made up in Jesus Christ. Romans 4, 17, God calls things that are not as though they were. Isn't that something? God looks at you through the lenses of his son, Jesus Christ, and says, you're good enough. He doesn't say, well, okay, we'll let you slide. No, he calls things that are not as though they were. And when you think about that principle, it applies in so many, many different ways. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, acted as if he believed. We talked last Wednesday night on the Facebook Live about each one of those individual things where it looked like Abraham had made a horrible, terrible mistake that could never be, could never be forgiven. And yet he went on to become a person of faith, and we went, by, we went by line by line to show how those things were true. And so you, if you missed that, you might want to go back to Facebook and, and catch that if this is ever... If this, if this interests you or if it puzzles you. But against all hope, Abraham in hope did some things. And part of the reason that he had reason not to hope was his own failures and his own problems in life, the things that happened as he walked through uh, this world. And so as we look back and forth between doubt and faith, remember, doubt means I can't see clearly, I don't do everything right, and I haven't decided who to trust. Faith equals, I can't see clearly, I don't do everything right, and I have decided who to trust. The point is, as Christians, we're being asked to trust Jesus, trust in the fog, trust in the light, trust when it's clear, trust when it's not. And when it's not clear, to walk as if what we have faith in is true. Even if we can't see that it's true, even if at the moment it doesn't feel that it's true, even if in our own mistakes we have... Uh, uh, made it seem as if it's not true. Faith is this. Just keep walking. No matter what, just keep walking.